Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius the governor was the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out into the city of Nazareth and of Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house of the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for what it means to us to have you as our Savior. Heavenly Father, I pray you'd allow me to preach. I'm going to preach a few minutes here to these people, Lord. They came out tonight on Christmas Eve, a night when most of us think about spending time with family and staying home. But they came out, Lord, to your house because they want to hear your word. They wanted to support me. Lord, I pray that you'd give them a special blessing. Thank you for them. Your precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Now it says here, and I'm going to read a little bit further. It says, And there were in the same country shepherd abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. She brought forth her first son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. If she would have only known that 33 years later, 33 and a little bit over, some years later, that those swaddling clothes, that represents something else. I think the reason they, they, the Bible is full of things where it shows you different things and it, different things lead into different things and, and God tries to show you Jesus through everything. Every single book in the Bible, He tries to show you His Son. He tries to show you how His Son came to this earth to die for you and die for your sins. And look here, it says, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. The reason she wrapped him in swaddling clothes was swaddling clothes were kind of like the burial clothes. I guess what I'm telling you this morning, or this evening, is that Jesus was basically born to die. I think some people are born to hunt. They're born to fish. Maybe they're born to ride their motorcycles or Harleys and things like that. Or maybe I even know some guys that are born to fight. They're just going to fight their whole time. But the one reason that Jesus was born was He was born to die. The Bible says that He was born for that one reason. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, it talks about Emmanuel. It talks about God being with us. Isaiah 7, 14 says this. It says, Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, talks about, talks about Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. That's what it means. Do you realize that, that Jesus always is? He always was. In Genesis chapter 1, it talks about how... It talks about in Genesis chapter 1, 26. It talks about how we're going to make man in our own image. And we're going to make man just like us. If, if, if we're going to make man like us, then who is the us? The us was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus always was. The Bible talks about at the end, when, when, in, in the book of Revelations, how He's going to sit on the right hand of the Father. It talks about how He always is and He always was. We think that Christmas time, we think, it's, we think of it as Jesus' birthday, like Jesus was just born on Christmas. Jesus always was. He always was with God. Talking about the deity of Christ, the deity of Christ and and talking about Jesus when He came. Jesus' birth here on earth, that's when He became a man. That's what happened. He took the form of a man. Talk about humbling. Talk about a humbling thing. It's when you take the form of the man. We're talking about the creator of earth, the creator of heaven, the creator of everything. He let a woman named Mary hold him. And he looked up at her. And she thought, boy, this baby's going to be special. This baby's going to be something. But how humbling it was for him to let her even hold him. I'm talking the holiest of holiest things we could ever even think of. That's what God is. 
He's the most powerful, the most precious thing ever. And he humbled himself, and he took the form of a man, and he came on earth, and he was born. And then after that, guess where he was born at? Bible said he was laid in a manger. Bible talks about how there was no room for, an in, it, it had room for him at the end. Talks about how he was born in a barn. You mean to tell me that, 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 that God, the creator of the earth, humbled himself, came down here on earth, was born of a woman, and then to boot, he was born in a barn. I remember when they had the royal wedding on TV and everybody was going crazy and watching it. All the pomp and circumstance. When the king and the queen, prince, princess, when, and remember when their baby was born, how crazy they went? Our king was born. Born in a barn. Humble. Came down here on earth. Took the form of a man. The Bible says that Jesus was God in the flesh. Some say Jesus was just a man. Some people say that He's just a person. He's just a man that walked around. I'm telling you, He always is. He always was. He always will be, the Bible says. I'm telling you that He came down here and He was born to die. When they said in the Bible, when they said in the beginning of Genesis chapter 1, they said, they said, let us make man in our own image. See, the deal was that man kept sinning and sinning and sinning and doing things wrong. No matter what, it seems like to me, it seems like if you look at what God makes, the earth, trees, animals, things like that, they, they don't have a lot of flaws. They don't, the, the trees die, a new one springs up. I paint a car, it gets rusty. I fix something, put a new part on it, it gets rusty. It wears out. I change some brake pads, they get worn out. We paint this paint, in 10 years it'll be wore out. Put a new hinge on the door, it'll be wore out. God created everything. So God basically, everything, what I'm trying to say is everything that man makes is imperfect. So God looks at man and He, he sees that man keeps sinning and, and uh, every time man does something wrong in the Old Testament, he has to come forth and he has to give an offering to pay for his sin. God's not going to be a liar. God's not going to be mocked. God says that when you, when you have sin and when you commit a sin, you have to have an atonement for that sin. Basically, that sin has to be paid for with blood. So in the Old Testament, man would commit a sin, and they'd say they're sorry to God. They'd kill an animal, they'd burn it on the altar. God would smell that, and He'd know that they were, they were asking for forgiveness. He would give it to them. Well, pretty soon I got so bad that mankind was just getting so wicked and so evil that no matter what they did, they couldn't find a sufficient offering to take place of their sin and pay their sin debt. They couldn't find anything worth enough. They couldn't find anything that actually told God they were really sorry. So God created, God, God decided that we're going to have to do something. Somebody's going to have to go down there and pay their sin debt. There's no one sufficient to do it. There's no man sufficient that can do it. And Jesus said He would do it. He said, I'll go down there. I'll be born of a woman. I'll take their sin. I'll take their sin and I'll take it to the cross with me. And when I'm nailed on the cross, I'll be the sacrifice for their sin. And no one else can pay that sin debt but me. And all they'll have to do is they'll just have to accept me as their Savior. Ask me into their heart. Trust me with their salvation. He said that's all they're going to have to do. Amen. There was nothing just. There was nothing good enough. Jesus was born to die. The Bible says there's one way through hev into heaven. That's through Jesus. There's only one way. You can't jump high enough. You can't save up enough money. You can't work hard enough. You can't build a ladder into heaven. No matter what you do, there's only one way, the Bible said, and that's through Jesus. Amen. Jesus was born to die. He came down here and He humbled Himself because that's how much He loved us had an opportunity to talk to a guy a couple weeks ago. Actually, a guy came here to the church and he was working on the church. And he, and he's, he can't believe what, what he's went through in his life. And he can't believe the things that's happened to him. And he said, sometimes I get mad at God. 
Sometimes I get mad at God. Why did He do this to me? Why did He do these things? I have no idea sometimes why He does things. But I told the man, I said, there's one thing I know for sure. I know for sure that He loves you. I know 100% sure that. The Bible talks in Isaiah, it talks about Jesus when they hung Him on the cross. It talks about how bad they whipped Him. It talks about how they whipped Him with a cat of nine tails and they whipped Him 39 times. A cat of nine tails has uh, a whip with little shards of bone and fragment and things like that. And they whipped Him 39 times. Times nine. That's how bad they whipped Him. And He still kept going. He still never quit. He still never stopped. He went all the way to the cross for me and you. He did that because He loves us. There's no way that anyone will ever tell me that He doesn't love us. And He doesn't care for us. And He doesn't know what we're going through. You know when, uh, when He hung on the cross and he, and he cried out to His Father, the Bible says about it, I, I think that was truly the one time that He was alone. He, ta- he had taken our sins upon Him. And God actually had to turn His back on Him because He couldn't look at Him. Because he had so many sins on him. And God turned his back on him and he was truly alone. It's lonely being alone. Sometimes I can't, I'll come to this church and I'll work by myself and there'll be nobody here. It's lonely being alone. It's lonely not having nobody with you. And I'll call Tina and I'll have her and the girls come out or something like that. Jesus was actually alone. You think about it, we're never alone. You may think you're alone, but God's always here. He's always watching over us. He's always with us. Now maybe if you're not saved and you never accept Him as your Savior, you might be alone, but there's always people around us. No matter where we go, there's somebody around us. There's somebody within a phone call. There's somebody, maybe we can get on the internet and we can, we can talk to someone or different things like that. But Jesus was actually alone. All alone. How horrible that must have been. And He did that for us. He did that for us. No questions asked. He didn't want anything in return. He didn't make a deal with us or anything like that. He just did that just because He loved us. That's what Joseph did to Mary. Just because He loved her. I love that story, how He loved her so much that He didn't make an example of her. He didn't care. That's what love is. That's what Jesus is. And that's why He died for us. We can't comprehend it. We can't figure it out. I said it a long time ago. Why He saved me, I'll have no idea. But I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm not going to ask why. I'm not going to question him. He just did it. 